Hello, this is David James, and we're back talking all things Bible and Bible study and Bible reading. And um, uh, in the last one, we discussed uh, the idea of a concordance. And the concordance is a strong, exhaustive concordance of the Bible. Now, this, this is the gold standard when it comes to scripture um, reading and word study. So most of your studies generally spring from there because many of the study aids you buy and use commonly reference the same numbering system that Mr. Strong's himself developed, okay? So this is, you can still buy these, like I didn't buy this one long ago because I, I, I couldn't find my old hard copy of, of the original that I owned uh, hiding somewhere. Um, but so I bought a new one because I don't like to lose hard copies of things because you never know um, if you're going to have a hard copy one day for all kinds of reasons. Now, um, I read these Bibles often and um, I don't use the Dakes Bible as much, um, but I do use the Thompson chain reference. I read my New Living. I use the Passion. I use this one, my my uh, my New King James Bible, and um, but more often than not, my word studies entail the electronic version of the Bible. Now I use a version called Olive Tree, and I'm going to show you what Olive Tree looks like. So I'm going to be putting it all on the screen here so you can see it. So there's the Olive Tree app. And on this app, I have many Bibles, um, and they're all listed um, um, in the form of an icon. Anything that I've downloaded, these ones happen to be my favorites, but I own much more. So I put this on my favorites page, so I have quick access to it. So on my favorites, I've got my Vines Expository Dictionary. I've got an Easton's Bible Dictionary. I've got a W.E. Vines New Testament Word Picture. I've got an olive tree concordance. I've got uh, Matthew Henry's concise commentary on the whole Bible. I've got Jameson's, Jameson Fawcett and Brown commentary on the whole Bible. I've got the NIV. <coughs> I've got the ESV. Um, I've got the names. Now, I just keep the NIV around there for comic relief. Uh, I've got Josephus. Now, Josephus was a famous Jewish historian. Um, who's extremely re reliable um, with extra biblical information um, uh, about the time of Jesus and much of Jewish, Jewish history. Um, I can't see that what that one is. What's that one? Oh, that's the Refor Reformation Study Bible. I don't use that one much. Now, the King James Interlinear, this gives me the actual text with the Greek words and their literal meaning listed underneath. And for instance, um, here it is, and the disciples. That means G3101. Now look at that. I touch G3101, and that is the Strong's number 3101. And um, um, from a root 3129, a disciple, a learner, a pupil, uh, a disciple. And if I want to see all the places where that exact Greek word occurs, I go like that. And I've got 253 results in the New Testament where that word occurs. Now, um, most commonly, um, I'll, be, I'll be kicking around the New King James. Now, I use the New King James a lot um, electronically because the reference system in it the actual scripture reference system in it is second to none. I use it often. It's excellent. So it's actually the same reference system that is in this New King James hardcover Bible. But I use this particular version. Um, and for instance, I'll be reading along in here. Okay, so uh, we're in Acts 10, verse 2. 
a devout man and one who feared God. Hmm, what does feared God mean? Or what, what is that about? Where do I find other references to feared God? So, 2C. 2C. I can flip further in and see it. Acts 10.22. It'll come up on the screen. Back it up. Acts 10.35. It'll come up on the screen. The word fear again. Acts 13, six, Acts, um, oh, back it up, back it up. Lost it. Where we are. Fear God. There we go. Acts 13, 26. Men and brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to you the word of this salvation has been sent. So that gives me the reference for that. It doesn't mean it's the exact same Greek word. But it does mean that I can look up other scriptures related to it. It doesn't mean that's an endless chain of scriptures about the fear of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is likely one of the most comprehensive studies in the Bible. Then we go to um, another word, memorial. Verse 4, the last part says, Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. What's that word memorial mean? Moisun, a, mo a reminder a record, and it occurs three times. It tells me right there. A memorial, that by which the memory of any person or thing is preserved. Now, this is G3422. That word memorial is G3422, found here in this book, but comes up right on my page, right there. And I can search for it here, and there's the three results. I can touch it there, and it'll take me right to it. So that's how that works. Um, flipping to the Amplified Bible. Um, I didn't get into that one in depth yet. Um, but the Amplified um, is special in its own right. And it has an expanded text where it's actually quite close to the Greek. A lot of scholars um, don't like it. Um, they think it's, I don't know, they got something against it. You know how it is with new things. It's back when this came out in the 60s. Um, um, the theologians were much against this particular Bible, but <clears throat> didn't take 20, 20, 25 years. And, and a lot of them were saying, like, this is actually the most accurate Bible when it comes to um, literal interpretation of Scripture. It's a difficult Bible to read, <clears throat> the Amplified, but um, for study, it's invaluable because it puts things in just such an expanded sense. So... For instance, the way our English our English language is so limiting um, when you compare it against Hebrew or Greek, it's such a shallow language. So we can what would take a whole like one word in Hebrew would take um, you know a sentence for us to explain the meaning of that word and qualify it this way and say it that way. That's what that one word means. That's kind of the limits of our English language. It's 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 quite weak. Um, so it's what we got to work with because I don't speak another language. And if you're watching this, you probably don't either, unless you're watching subtitles. <clears throat> but this is the one I study from. The actual um, electronic text for when I'm looking up scripture, I can actually take this. <clears throat> so I can take verse 10 and 11 and I can go, I can go that and I can go copy. Then I can copy verse 10 or I can copy 11, 12, 13, 14. Copy five verses. Now I can open up anything here and I can write paste. Okay, so I've got the entire scripture pasted there that I can do with whatever I want. I can insert it in <clears throat> something else I'm writing. I can keep it there as a note um, with, with a header of some kind. You know, any way you take notes, that's, that's, this, this is so super valuable. So the, the one that I use is called Olive Tree. Now there, <clears throat> there are other electronic versions, but I've, I've been using this particular um, software for so long. I first got it on the PC and as things progressed, they made it available on the iPhone and it's available on Android operating systems. It's available on PC and Mac. And so the Olive Tree system allows you to so all these bibles you see here i actually pay money for like some of them a lot of money some of them are 50 60 70 dollars just for the electronic version so everything you see here i actually own electronically 
So, and many of them I own physically, as I've been showing you. So, what I own in this app, I own. And so I get them offline as much as I want. Um, I read them um, as often as I want, whether there's internet or not. Um, and so they're super valuable for Bible study. Okay, so uh, there's other ones available that you can get, but they're mostly online versions. And some of them, um, uh, like you don't, I think you pay for some of, some elements of the program. Um, but most of the online versions are strictly online. So there's like uh, the main ones are U Bible, uh, the Blue Letter Bible. Um, they have a lot. Uh, and most of the material that I have, not everything, because um, it, it's more limited. Um, but you can read the basic translations that I've talked about um, for free using Blue Letter Bible, the U Bible, um, and similar apps, even Logos Bible software. Um, but a lot of that you have to pay for too. So if you want something that's yours um, electronically, that's a reference system and you enjoy that kind of thing, uh, the Olive Tree Bible is, is the base program, it gives you the King James Bible, and then you add the other Bibles to it. So I started out with this King James, uh, not this one actually, because the, the base King James doesn't have Strong's. So this particular one has the Strong's numbers attached to it, so uh, four-footed beasts. So if that's just a normal Bible, I could touch that, it won't do anything, right? But this one, um, gives me anything as much information as I want on these words and it's just super valuable. So uh, I wanted to show you that because um, electronic versions have a lot of value. Um, I, I use my iPhone a lot for study and for making notes and for writing, uh, my iPad that is, and um, my iPhone I use a lot too because it's in my hand, it's always there. My iPad's not always there, but my iPhone always is, right? Um, so um, I make it very useful um, and it's so fast. You can get through so much information and do things so much more quickly. I can show you my old notepads when I first came to the Lord, they're a stack of them like this, just filled with all my revelations and scriptures and ideas and it's super cool. And if you still like writing notes, write notes. Um, I'm just, I'm giving you options. Do what you like, do what works for you. You may have a great aversion to electronic Bibles. Um, you know, I'm a little, you know, I, I like every bit of tech I can get. If it makes it easier and quicker, I'm going to use it. I mean, I own I everything. Okay. Everything Apple makes I've either owned or own now. And usually the latest version. I'm just, that's just the way it is. Uh, but I also love these, these book Bibles. And the, every study has shown that when you read and study scripture, you gain more understanding and revelation and actual insight from anything you read when you read it in an actual Bible Bible. Now, you can say, you because your mind remembers, okay, that's bottom right on that page. It's top left on that page. Um, it's it. There's no relativity when it comes to an electronic version because depending on the size of your screen, the text could be anywhere. You know how that is, right? Because if it's big or small, change the font, everything changes. But with the Bible, there's a familiarity to it. <clears throat> your, the way your brain works, it actually has much higher retention with the book. Now, on the next one, I'm going to talk to you about Bible reading plans. Should you have a Bible reading plan? What do they look like? How do they work? I'm going to get into that on the next one. See you then. Mm -hmm.